Hello, my name is Maria and these are my bookshelves. Today's video is my August wrap up. But first, I would like to thank all of you for all of the love and kindness that you have shown me on my first video. So thank you, thank you, thank you. So let's get into the books that I have read in the month of August. Yeah, it will seem like a lot because it's uh, 18, but actually most of these were audiobooks. Of course, I have read physical books and those are here. Probably you can see, and that is two, four, six, seven. Actually, this is just one book. But these are the actual books that I've read, and then the rest I have just listened to. So let's get into this. The first one was um, a Hungarian one, and that was an audiobook that we have listened to with my husband because that is his favorite book, and that is by an author called um, Reitu Jenő. He also goes by the pseudonym P. Howard. And then this book is actually online in English, so I will link it down below for you guys because I think it's very, very funny and very interesting. And this is, um, uh, of course, the title is The 14 Karat Car which means that it's a car made of gold. Well, not entirely, but covered in gold, but you know, I'm just not going to spoil everything for you. But this is, um, this author is just notoriously funny and he has quirky characters in all of his books. If you can hear snoring that I have a German Shepherd behind the camera here, who is now adjusting her hair, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so she Matsy sleeping right behind the camera, but I will probably show you. Matsy. <laughs> so anyways, this is the 14 karat car and uh, it has um, very quirky characters who have a lot of things happening to them. I'm telling you at some point it was a, a tiny bit too much. And then these things usually take place in the Foreign Legion, so they usually join the Foreign Legion, the French Legion in Africa, and they just get, you know, get into different kind of troubles and mischiefs and, and all kinds of good stuff, and it's very, very funny. This one was about um, a young guy called Ivan Gorchev, who gets into all kinds of trouble. He gets money, then you know, he spends it funny and he has like um, an, um, an assistant, I think you can say, or a, a secretary who is who is called Mr. Vanek, who is also very, very quirky and crazy. And I think sometimes a tiny bit annoying, like funny annoying, but still, you know, he, he's a tiny bit annoying, but yeah. So these are funny characters. The whole thing is taking place in late 30s, early 40s, so that, that also is kind of a vibe. Uh, it's, it's just a funny thing, so I would, highly I would highly recommend this one. I liked it. So it will be linked down below. Staying in the same era-ish uh, will be a P.G. Woodhouse, and I've read a Thank You Jeeves. I didn't read it, of course, I listened to it, but it was, it was fun anyways. And this one was written in, in 1934. The previous one was in 1939. So it's kind of like the same era. I just, I don't know, I was into that feeling, I guess. It's also full of adventures and there's a love interest, just like th there was a love interest in the 14 karat car as well. The craziness of Bertram Booster and then the coolness of Jeeves. And he always comes to the rescue. I just love it. Of course, it was funny. It was adventurous. It had the love interest. You know, Jeeves is, is such a classic, it's a staple. Yeah. Then we can move into the actual books because I started the the Gillian Flynn craze that I was on this month. So the next is Dark Places. And this was the first like physical book that I read this month. And wow, like what a book, my it was it was crazy good. I am just in love with Gillian Flynn's writing, honestly. I've read Gone Girl before this, like, I th well, not when it came out. I think I read it when the movie came out, when I was like freshly married, which is an interesting thing to read. You know, Gone Girl is kind of interesting to read when you are kind of just married. <laughs> 
anyways. <laughs> so, uh, Dark Places. I love this. This was a book that grabbed me from page one. It's just so interesting. I don't want to spoil this for anyone, so I will not get into the story. Um, one thing that I was not struggling with is just keeping the jumps uh, between the timelines. So, you know, you're reading about her current life, like Libby Day now, and then when the things happened in her childhood. Um, and then going back to family members' accounts. Probably the mom was the only character kind of likable in this book. And it's interesting because I thought of, you know, Gillian Flynn and Gone Girl. I, in Gone Girl, I loved Amy Dunn. It's such a weird thing to say because I think probably the world hates her. But I liked her. I liked her drive and focus and the way she got things done. It was just all focused in an entirely wrong direction. But I liked Amy Dunn. I liked her, you know, determination and her spirit. It's just she focused it on the completely wrong things. But in Dark Places, I liked no one. Like there is not one. Like I said, the mom is kind of okay. Like their mom is okay, but. Other than that, and probably your sister is all right, but you know, these are just not nice people. Not exactly. So of course, you know, you'll understand why they are the way they are, but it's just, you know, not someone when, yeah, I want them to be so happy because they're so nice. You know, it's not that kind of a book, but the whole thing is written so well, like she writes so well that you are honestly unable to put it down. So, you know, this was amazing. I loved it. I read it in, I don't know, five days which sounds like a lot, but I'm usually working and doing things. So it's, it's a huge deal for me because it's like 500 pages or something. No, it's 540 pages. So yeah, it, it means I liked it. If I read like more than a hundred pages a day, then it means that I loved it. So this was nice. I loved it. And this kind of started a Gillian Flynn, you know, um, craze for me this month so from this i moved on to sharp objects i kind of went the wrong way with her books because the first one i read was gone girl way back then and then dark places and then sharp objects which was her first novel so i've read sharp objects and um, i love this one as well this was crazy good as well but it, of course it was a little bit different um also not willing to spoil this for anyone I kind of like Camille, so Camille I totally would prefer to Libby in Dark Places. Of course Amy would be my favorite character from all of her books, like especially the protagonist of the books. Um, but this was really really amazing, of course, with amazing twists at the end, which you kind of have a feel for, but you don't really know, but then it turns out it's not, but then yeah, so you know, crazy good. And I think with her books, you can feel how gradually they get better. So for me, it was kind of backwards, but I felt like this was good, but then this was better. And then Gone Girl is just crazy good. It's just way better than anything else I've read in, in a while, especially back then. And it does not stop here because I also read The Grown Up, which is her like latest book which is just kind of like a short story because this is just 67 pages this is the grown-up you know i like this because it was her writing i kind of like her writing I, I like her style um this was nice the ending was not i really hated the ending on this one every other book was good with the ending i think her books this one uh but of course i would highly recommend all of gillian flynn's books i am just kind of sad that she doesn't have any more like written at this point because they're so good but i know that she has a tv show that she's working on so i'm looking forward to that one but yeah so gillian flynn yay my favorite and then i've listened to paulo Co coelho coelho i i'm not i'm sorry i don't exactly know how to say his name I will, of course, put this on the screen, but um, I've listened to The Witch of Portobello and then The Zaheer. And um, I've read The Alchemist like two years ago or three years ago. I'm not even sure exactly when, which I liked. I think that was very, very nice. But to, to um, experience his books in bulk, you know, they're kind of on the same philosophical 
you know, run of thoughts. So you don't need like a bunch of them at the same time. I think you can break them up, you know, for years. You can, you know, read one a year and then probably another one next year because, um, you know, one after the other is just a little bit too much of the same thing but you know they're both about uh, the meaning of life the meaning of your individual life how you can you know make the most of your personality of how you can influence other people these are very interesting these are very you know thought-provoking books so yeah moving on then i've listened to the new romancer by um william gibson and um I like sci-fi. I do. I, I, I'm not crazy. I know some people are crazy about it. I'm not crazy, but I like it. And earlier on, like in this book, it was interesting, you know, how the punishment, don't want to spoil it, but you know how things came about. It was fun and kind of interesting, but also unnecessary vulgarity, I think. This I just couldn't get into so much like as much as I thought I would because it's such a hyped book I, I've heard so much about this it just I don't know it kind of flopped for me a little bit so I didn't exactly enjoy it I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings but for me personally it wasn't something that was such a great and huge thing that took me with it so so yeah then I went on a little bit of a kind of a horror type ish of a of an audiobook phase during August and um, I've listened to The Exorcist by William Peter Blatty. It was exactly, I think, what I expected from the movie because of course I've seen the movie before I've listened to the book and it was amazing. It was very, very good. I really enjoyed it. Of course it was graphic at times because if it is The Exorcist, it would bound to be but how they kind of detailed things more than they did in the movies of course in the movie of course i just loved it so it was a really really great book it, it was written really really well and i think it was the author who, who's read it i think the one that i listened to i would have to look that up and probably link it down below for you but yeah i think the, yeah the author read it himself which was amazing it was just such an amazing experience so I love that one. And from that on, I went into the Ed and Lorraine Warren book craze that I was on last month. So I have my notes. Um, I've listened to Graveyard, Ghost Hunters and The Haunted. Um, these books are kind of accounts of their work, of, of stories and families and cases they've had. Um, these were similar to, you know, like videos you can find on YouTube where people just, you know, account their experiences with the supernatural. So, but, you know, I like these things. I like spooky things. I like horror books. I like ghost stories, especially if, if that makes sense. So I really, really enjoy them. I think I want to listen to more of them. But there are so many other things that I'm listening to right now that I think I would have to get through a few things before I get back to this. Probably for Halloween. I think for October it would be a great thing to listen to all of the Ed and Lorraine Warren books. It would be a cool thing for Halloween. Let's see how we can go about that. Moving on because I have just so many things to go through. Then for actual books, for physical books, I've read um, East of Eden by John Steinbeck. I hope I say that right. So these are the ones that I have are in two volumes. So this is East of Eden. This is two volumes. And I have to say, I loved this. I love this book. This was so, so great. Ah, oh, I mean, I love John Steinbeck. I really love, love his books. I loved, I loved Grapes of Wrath. I loved um, what was it? Of Mice and Men. I've read The Pearl that I liked. But especially the bigger, I mean, I really, really liked Grapes of Wrath. And then this was so, so good. Of course, these are not happy books. I was a little bit, you know, afraid that these were going to make me depressed. But no, there was some unfortunate foreshadowing in these books that I kind of, I was afraid throughout the whole thing that something way worse is going to happen than what actually did. So... If you are afraid to read these because you're afraid that it's going to make you depressed because, you know, sad books tend to do that to me. 
Anyways, horror books don't, but sad books do. I don't know, I'm crazy that way. So you can totally read these because these are amazing. I love the story. I love his language. I love his world. I just love the descriptions and I love, you know, it's taking place in California for the most part. His descriptions of nature and, and just the whole area. Oh, it's just so beautiful. It's such a classic and there is a reason why it's a classic. It's a good classic. So it's a bit more of a modern classic, but I would highly, highly recommend this one. So this was a five star from me. I did spend some time with this, of course, because the whole thing together was like 700 pages or something. I think, no, eight. Yeah, the two books together were somewhat over, a tiny bit over 800 pages in the Hungarian edition that I've read. But such an amazing book, such an amazing book. So, John Steinbeck, I love, love, love East of Eden. Yay! Then I've listened to a Hungarian audiobook, and this was by uh, Tomasi Aron. He's a Hungarian author, and then it takes place in Transylvania. This, uh, uh, the title is Abel Arengetekben, which means Abel in the woods. And it is about a teenage boy, I think he was 15 in the book and he takes up um, um, a job as um, as a forest guard so he's guarding the woods and he's selling wood to people and that's his job to sell wood and kind of help people you know load up the trucks and also take care of, of you know the area I guess and then he also has like many funny funny adventures sometimes you know a bit annoying but sometimes just very very funny things and it's really interesting how he is describing the whole land and and the whole experience of, of being in the woods so I just really loved it also it's the language is very very rich it's the rich you know Transylvanian Hungarian that you you just have to experience for yourself so for me in my nationality it was just a great thing to to actually listen to because I've listened to it and the person who's read it had such an amazing accent like such a such an amazing dialect actually that it was a joy to listen to it so yeah that was a cool thing for me then staying on the on the Hungarian lane I also um, read another one from uh, B Howard if we're going with his pseudonym and that is Dirty Fred the Captain which is this one this is in Hungarian this is my copy and I have to say this is my favorite so far out of his books he has written so many I just love this one this is amazing so Dirty Fred the Captain and this was hilarious I mean from the beginning if this is just a laugh out loud book this is amazing um, yeah, it most of it takes place on a steamboat, which is amazing. And of course, misadventures, misunderstandings, there is just a little bit of mystery because people are dying and then disappearing and then there seems to be a ghost, but then no. And then some identities are being switched up and then people go into exotic countries. And this is just, just an amazing book. So. I will try to find this in English if I can and then link it down below for you guys. But P. Howard Reitoyan, amazing, amazing, amazing Hungarian author. Like funny, adventurous, quirky characters. Usually just a laugh out loud kind of an experience. And this was released in 1940. So of course the world is amazing and the feel is amazing. So loved this, yes. Then one afternoon my um, husband thought that we should listen to The Art of War, and we did. And um, thankfully it was short because... Yeah, well it was interesting. Sometimes it was interesting, but it's such a book for men because I just couldn't care less, honestly. I know it's a great thing and you're supposed to read it and, and all that kind of stuff, but it's just not my thing, so I'm sorry. I, you know... It was short, so I could listen to it while I was doing something else, but uh, that's it, that's it. I'm not roasting it, just moving on. And now we are at the last book of the month, which was Edward Snowden, Permanent Record. This is in Hungarian, so of course the title is going to be different, but um, so I've read a Permanent Record. So I've seen the movie, which is basically 
the plot of the book except the book is of course so much better because it, it starts with his childhood and I really enjoy and I, actually I really enjoy his writing I think he is a good writer he is really good with words and um, I just really found this interesting I, the main reason I think why I read this book it wasn't exactly well of course it was interesting how he found out about you know, the surveillance thing and how he kind of fought it and what he did, of course, that was interesting because it's more like a, you know, a, a true crime story, kind of, because it's kind of what this is. Uh, I mostly read this to just to find out how he became the genius at IT that he is. I was just more interested to see how he got interested in computers and programming and, you know, you know computer science as a thing. So I was more interested in probably his life and his journey and also kind of what he did after. I um, liked it because it was a good story, like I read it as a story. I liked the writing, I liked his words and it was really interesting, it was an interesting book even though it was full of you know, some IT stuff that I couldn't always quite follow but, but yeah, it, it was good, I liked it, I think it was fun. And I just realized that I left out The Martian because I've listened to The Martian by Andy Weir, Weir, Andy Weir, Weir, I'm sorry, I don't know how to say it. Oh my, that's five out of five, amazing. As much as I didn't, I, as much as I wasn't crazy about the movie, I wasn't a crazy fan of it. I liked it. My husband actually worked on the set of the movie. He worked at the company because it was shot in Budapest, some parts of it and he worked on some of the sets of the movie. Just, you know, fun fact. But um, I liked the movie, but the book was amazing, it was so good, like so much better, of course, with the descriptions of everything. And just, I cannot even wrap my mind around how someone could actually write that and just find answers to everything with science. Of course, science is life, but that was a genius, that was a genius book, so five out of five, amazing. I didn't understand, like, probably any of it, like, not actually understand. I mean, I could follow his thought process and it was amazing to, like, listen to and to experience, but wow, wow, what an amazing book, what an amazing invention. Honestly, that's such an inventive book, amazing. So, yeah, The Martian is definitely five out of five for me. Whew, that was something you guys so I hope you like this please like the video subscribe to my channel and then until the next one let's just read something <laughs>